Good morning, everybody. Beautiful day here in the Philippines. The sun just rose up. Let me give you a look at it. I see Melinda. She's down on the beach over there uh, doing a little stretching and exercising as well. Let's have a look at this morning sun. She's been slowly gathering up and making patterns in here. And she gets more, she changes it. I guess a few of them, we both come up with a few and then she's done the most part of it though. Same thing over here. She just slowly gets different rocks and puts in around her plants and all. And I go out too and I pick up shells and I bring those shells up here and when she picks up shells and brings them up here and we put some uh, beach glass we add beach glass in we put that in she's slowly making patterns around in this it's pretty cool in here as well those little things like that that make a place uh, really feel like a home you know and she's starting some of that project over here on the other side too and uh, another landscaping bed is constantly moving it forward adding those things in so I was giving Mel a suggestion we have tons of these cement sacks you know from doing this pour around here and some of them, they get damaged now. These cement sacks right here. And they're like a woven material, see? And I suggested to her that she could take a pair of scissors and cut and lay those open. And spread it out nice and flat. And she could take that and cut holes in it and slip it over her plants. <clears throat> and around them. And then put all her stones down on top of that. And that would work just like that landscaping cloth, you know. It would do the exact same thing. And we could repurpose all of these sacks that we have, too. I think she's about to do it right now. She didn't hesitate. She done got scissors and uh, bags in her hands. Yeah. Yeah. Because I told her that grass is going to grow up and all that. And she's going to have an ongoing bottle. <clears throat> so, uh, there she goes. She didn't hesitate, either. It's a good, good repurpose use for those. All right, so let me pick up with you on these bottom rooms right here. What we had going on in here yesterday. So what I have right here that we were working at yesterday is the shower setup that goes on the wall. And this has got a long tube that comes up off of it. And then you can slide this up even further and it's got a rain style shower head. Then it's also got a wand with a hose that comes off one side of the valve here. And it's got a sprayer with a hose that comes off the other side of the valve there. It's got a tray that comes around the bottom, goes on the wall for soaps and shampoos. It's got hooks that go on there for hooking your little things like your little uh, scrubs and stuff like that. And, so you got all that there. It, you know, it's uh, quite a bit to this kit. There's that little rainfall head. It's got some plastic on here right now that you got to peel off. But uh, this is what's going on the wall. And, of course, you've got to get it set up right. And we were putting some of it together here yesterday right here. We put this little uh, tubes in that come with the kit. Of course, this wall, and this is another disaster of it being hollow block and still has to be rendered is by the time you render it you don't know exactly what your distance is there and then when you get ready the tile you've got to add more for tile and the mortar as well so there's an unknown there's a question there and we got to have a definite a finite area to work in for this thing to properly be up against the wall 
and um, and looking like it's installed properly, not no uh, pipe sticking out like this, or it couldn't get in far enough and seal. So you need it right. You need it right. And to go on the PPR, this is the fittings for PPR. Isn't that PPR nice? You know, if that was just old PVC, that would just be some plastic threads in there. But PPR is definitely a huge upgrade compared to any kind of PVC. So this is the PPR fitting. And of course, you know, it'll screw on there. And you'll put your Teflon tape and things on there, of course. So this here has got to go in this wall down here. And so see, we let the gap open in the wall because you're going to have to set all this. You're going to have to put these on. You're going to have to have a proper spread. This was put together while I was pressure testing the pipes for leaks. And at least with a concrete wall, you know that you're going to have four inches there exactly. Five inches, six inches, whatever you make your set thickness for your wall. You're going to know exactly then how much mortar you're going to put and how thick the tile is. But when you're rendering these hollow block walls, it's a question mark because in order to get everything floated out and if they didn't get the uh, hollow block even, like right up there, I can see that below that beam, they're in more and above that beam, they're sticking out right there. So that means by the time they render it, there could be an inch thick of rendering on here. It's, it's a question mark. It's all uh, just too much up in the air. And that's why they have to do big practices of really leaving it loose like this. I just wanted you guys to really see the work that goes in to them doing this their way. It's like here where they chiseled out or grind out a slot to put in an electrical box. And look at this. <clears> then <throat> they'll come in here and they'll do things to rough it up so that the rendering can attach. And I walked in here yesterday and look at this box here. Maybe y'all can see it. I don't know if you can see this well on video as I see it with a naked eye. Maybe not, but it's all twisted around. And let's look over here at mine. Look here, you can just peel this tape off that I originally wrapped around it. Just peel that off. There it is, all embedded nice and clean. Still got some grease in those holes I put to protect those uh, threads in there of the concrete corroding them. Concrete cast, hollow block. A lot of work still to finish this and it will never be as smooth as this. This is my example wall for YouTube out there. I decided to do this. The guys were like, oh, you know, let's do some hollow block. And at first I said, no, we're casting those. And when we were actually going to cast them, we had the, everything prepped on the floor and all. And I said, you know what? This is not my permanent part of the house. The house is upstairs. These are like guest rooms. Uh, we can use it even kind of like an Airbnb, you know, a little passive income if we choose to and all. I said, you know what? Um, Let's, let's give the viewers an example of the differences here. And so, since I did the last video on this and it hadn't even finished up to the top then, on that right there, I think they're out so far, like 16 bags of Crete and they still haven't plastered it. Now that's including, you know, it goes around, turns the corner, it's got a beam in it up here. And then of course there is a little partition wall and it's got a little small beam on top of it too that's a lot still got steel inside of it vertical and horizontal both and now it still has to be rendered a whole bunch more bikes now let's go over here and look at this wall this wall here including the column and that's a huge column including the column going down through here all the way down to that next section so all the way past that CR, all the way down, that right there, um, we were going back and looking and we found it, it was about 11 bags, yeah, 11 bags, all of that. Actually that was, that column 
that part of the wall, that column, and part of that wall there. And that was up to that was up to this level right here. Now there's nothing really structural in this, and this has got a lot of structural. These columns are massive, you know. Uh, so that's a lot of creep. Now just think about that. Just think about that. This guy is trying to tell me how I'm, you know, full of BS, uh, how much I can build this for. But I'm not full of BS. Once you, uh, oh, I remember what he else said. That, there's, that the real money is going to come in on finishing it out. But man, he is telling these millions of pesos that I'm going to spend to finish it out, you know, or whatever. I'm like, no, because when we pulled these forms, this is ready just to go around and a little bit of mix and plug these holes and get a person working on each side and they can go around and plug these holes. I can have a couple of people in just a little while have a whole bunch of holes plugged. Then we're ready to just come right over that, put a skim coat and, and paint. I mean, what, what finish work is there? Uh, floor tile. Floor tile is not that expensive in the Philippines. There's all kinds of price ranges. Floor tile, well, that's not no millions of pesos. Um, I don't have a ceiling to put in. This is my ceiling. This is it. There's my, my boxes, my wiring's there. There's no fur down ceiling. There's no drop ceiling. There's no buying additional plywood or hardy board or gypsum board or anything to put in up there. There's no buying hat channels and uh, all the little metal grid stuff to put in there or a, a floating ceiling or nothing. I have no expense for that. So where's the expense here? It's done. This is the ceiling. There it is. Just like over in our garage. And that doesn't look bad, now does it? Got your little light fixtures I'll put right there, LEDs. It's done. So what do we have here? Now I'm not doing that, but there you go right there. Where am I gonna be spending millions of pesos to finish this thing out? Okay, well, okay, he built a structure cheaper than I thought, but now I'm gonna come back and slap him in the face. I didn't see these because uh, YouTube held a lot of these comments. Good job, YouTube. And uh, really good filtering. But where where is this high-end finishing on here? I don't have to. You can choose the level of what you want to do. If I want to go out and buy high-dollar laminates and put on the walls and the floors and all that, I can. Or if you choose that you don't want to do that, don't. But these are finished. You know, this is finished. There's no more additional work to do. It's really down to just paint. So uh, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get people's mindsets. It's like I did a 20 by 18 or something in Cebu and it cost me 300 and something thousand pesos. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, don't know how it's finished out. I don't know what your variables are at the grade that you finished it out. But if you did a 20 by 18 for 300 something thousand pesos, well, let's look at what 300 something thousand pesos is. So let's look at that. 300,000 pesos. What are you looking at? $6,000, you know? Uh, every thousand's roughly 50,000. I know it's a little less exchange rate right now. Well, let's just say roughly uh, 50,000 pesos for every thousand dollars. So what are you looking at? Like $6,000, right? Uh, and apparently that was finished out, completely finished out. A 20 by 18. I have no clue what kind of finishings you did in your restroom. I have no clue what kind of finishings you did in your kitchen. I don't know. I don't know. So you could have went very nice on it. And of course you were probably paying a contractor as well. Um, and that makes a huge difference too. But if you ended up with a place to live for $6,000, what are you complaining about? You know, what are you complaining about? Um, I never said that I'm going to build this house for, I'm going to build this great big beach home for $30,000. I've never said that in this. Never said it. I will say this. 
if I was building a single story structure, say that ground level right there was my house and that was it. And it's enough. It's more than enough. You could do that really cheap, really cheap. Now I've got more money out in these overhangs around up there. But it's really not that much. I wouldn't have to have near the steel. The columns could just be minuscule and in all actuality i wouldn't even need no columns because the wall carries sheer strength and if it was a single story i wouldn't even pour columns inside of it all the dividing walls the 90s here on the corners outside all of that is going to give you all your rigidness and strength right there and all your load is going to be carried down sheer to your tie beams and your footers on the ground so if I was building a single story, you could eliminate the columns, eliminate the beams, other than if you need a beam that span across and if you're gonna put a flat deck, if you're gonna put a traditional roof, man, you can cast your walls and no beams. There's no need for them. Um, you bought 12 sheets, you bought 12 sheets of plywood. You cast it a whole side, eight foot tall. That would be like, what, 24 long, right? eight foot tall 24 foot long you cast at that area you pulled those sheets and then you move over and cast your next walls and then you move over those same sheets and cast your next and you move them all around you do that now say you want to do a, a concrete roof deck as well now turn those sheets up form underneath them and pour on top too those same 12 sheets will do every single bit of it dirt cheap